right today. By the way, it's so good to be back. I love you guys. Trust me, there's nowhere like home. Absolutely nowhere like home. So we're starting a series to called making the making of a disciple. It's the scent series. Remember that scent I've been trying to preach since. Since last year, there's a message I've been trying to preach. I preached it years ago, but since last year, every time we get here, the power of God is so power, strong that things happen. And I was a bit skeptical again because I'm like, we could start again and it will end. But glory to God, we're starting. Amen. It's going to be a journey. And the theme for the month is our month of supernatural what? Remembrance. Somebody say one day. Scripture says one day the Lord remembered. And one day David asked, is there anyone from the house one day? Somebody's one day is around the corner in the name of Jesus. So because you can't predict your one day, you have to show up every day. Glory to God. Now, the making of disciples sent series, I'm going to do just a part this morning because we have to take communion and I want us to also pray and think about some of the things that we're going to say. Now, before you are sent or before you become an envoy for the Lord, you must be discipled and remain discipled. You don't outgrow discipleship. You must remain a disciple. For all the workers that were on the call last month when Pastor Shegu came, he spoke about the identity of, the, of this church again. And remember Pastor Dr. Ekundai, how many of you were blessed by that? You know, and when I asked him afterwards, I said, Sir, by the way, everywhere I've been ministering, I've not lost my voice. It's just an open nation. And we just started and love boys don't go. But it's all right. I blame the Siri. Anyways, and I asked him, sir, what, is, what do you sense for Hope Nation? He said, Hope Nation is a, like a boot camp where people are discipled and sent. Are sent. And he spoke about the prophetic um, giftings of the house in terms of worship and sound. When French Spray is going to be happening in this all on the, I believe, 17th of, what date? 17th. And we're going to be recording that song that choir sang. What's that? Am I in What's that thing? I place. Ah. This thing was flogging us on the online. Such, can you celebrate the grief of God in the house? <laughs> Hallelujah. But he said something very powerful that we're a house of discipleship. And we do it in different ways, but we're more intentional as we go on. Hallelujah. The most influential people in scripture were people that were discipled. In fact, some of the guys that still have impact till today, I was teaching one place and I talked about Paul. Over 1,000 years of, and it's still relevant. But Paul was a disciple. Somebody say, I'll be a disciple. So we're saying that before we go into the message of the gospel, which I will do next week and all the other weeks, we're going to be looking at what is the gospel and what is not the gospel. What is the message? I know a lot of you are here in Christ, in Christ, and sometimes you're almost confused. No, 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 no. We'll bring you up. Don't let people bamboozle you with, with words. Because there's still a way to know a disciple. But you see, discipleship starts by following. Discipleship starts with following. This means following God and the system of learning and discipleship he has put around you or you into. In people, in a local assembly and other planted streams. The guarantee for a transformed life is discipleship. A transformed life that will have eternal value. I don't care how many cars you have. We're talking about internal value is what discipleship but i want to show you a little statistics about the difference of a believer or a child of god that comes to church but not discipled i'm telling you there's a difference we know ourselves there's a way a disciple acts in the house of god than the one that is not discipled the one that is discipled is a son i'm not here to be served i'm here to serve i have a question for you a disciple doesn't just show up in church a disciple will pray towards the service. A disciple will ask the Lord, pray for the leaders, pray for the entire service. I, uh, a disciple knows that this is my father's business. I was saying to them in New York at one friend's spring, I said I had a dream and I woke up, I saw somebody in church. I hope I told the person. I think I did. Yeah, I did. Yeah, I did. And I saw the person, what I heard in my spirit, that service is a gateway for access for some people this season. And I saw the person being rewarded. He didn't know he was going to be rewarded. But he came into a moment where he was rewarded. His disciple, his lifestyle is that of service. But let me show you quickly. And it's quite interesting to see. And you can tell if you are a disciple or not. And there's no shame. You can become one today. 
The difference between a Christian who is disciple versus one that is not can be significant in various aspects in their spiritual growth, in their spiritual lives. Let me look at spiritual growth. A discipled Christian tends to exhibit deeper spiritual growth and understanding of Scripture. Studies suggest that 70% 70 of those in discipleship program report a stronger faith. I tell people, listen, there is no time to know if you have heard well or been discipled well until when situation shows up. And situations does not mean bad, good or bad. Good or bad. There are some deals we are still negotiating, should I take? If you are a disciple, meaning you have been taught. You see, all this thing that is happening online, I mean, someone was in church told me, P.I. went somewhere and they said that, you see, the reason why some of you are depressed is because of the prophetic gift. I said, what? And she was like, P.I., thank God all this we are learning in church. Because I'm like, I don't understand. Show me in scripture. And they will go to, they say, they say Elijah was depressed. because of, No, no, no. If you read the scripture well, it was not because of the giftings alone that made Elijah dis, 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 He was exhausted. Fear! And he was exhausted. Fear! And what was God's response to that? He didn't say, my darling, let me get you fired up. No, he told him to eat, sleep. Then later, he told him to go and anoint a replacement. A disciple is not turned by what is going on online. Should I pay tithe? Should I not pay tithe? We're teaching it so you can understand it scripturally. If you don't pay tithe, you're not going to hell. There's nothing like that. It's not scripture. All right? At the same time, in the new covenant, you see that 10% was not mentioned because it's all percent. But you do it cheerfully. What do I mean by all percent? People were, Paul raised so much money in the New Testament than any, Paul, go and read 1 Corinthians, he's always raising offering. Not offering of come out to get five, 7,000 for seven promotion. Not, not those things. They're not scriptural. But for the work of the gospel, the gospel is not cheap. It's free. But the propagation of that gospel requires money. So when you are asking God to bless you, you are asking for in terms of, of, of mission. I told somebody, we were speaking the other day, I said, the Lord has said to us, so we're going to fund kingdom project. We're going to fund governmental project. We'll tell the government. You see, you see this thing, leave it. We and my friends, just five of us, we have decided to, to do this road from Lagos to Abuja. Why? The Bible says you will learn from none. You brought to Lagos and learn from none. So, you must, a disciple understands these things. You grow in your spiritual knowledge. Not disciple Christians often experience stagnation in spiritual growth. Research shows that many attend church but lack deep engagement with the teaching. I told you last year, as at the end of 2020, 2023, you had listened to a minimum of 52 messages. Minimum. Because those of you that come to IARA, your portion is in the Lord. You are, you are learning teaching every day. Almost 365 messages. My question is, what's the fruit of that message? A disciple will go back to the sermon. It's not enough to say, oh, wow, ooh, ooh. I mean, I was in a meeting the other day, myself and DDK, and um, someone was preaching. And the person we said, wow! And we just went, we don't know what shouting, like, I'm so sorry. There's nothing wrong with being to react to the word, it's good. But if the reaction ends with a shout, you have lost it. You have to go back. Another comparison between a disciple and non disciple, regular prayer activities. The majority, around 65%, feel equipped to pray effectively. The other way is sporadic. Prayer is sporadic for a non disciple believer and inconsistent. Community invest involvement, active, a disciple actively serving church and community. I tell you, a lot of us, a lot of the skills we do today, we learned it in church. Anybody? Moji is being paid for something she learned in church. True of us? How many of you project management? How many of you are in project management? If you are in church, you are the best project manager ever. Anybody? Since when have you been planning programs? Give me. Every Sunday. The church is like a free platform for job experience. But you lack understanding. That's why you do it shabbily. So a disciple is actively engaging. So he said, I don't want church. Listen, you, uh, what you're saying is, I don't want to be a disciple. I don't want to serve in church. Or me, I will just come in quickly. I carry my back. Mm, I go. Why are you doing a favor? Because I will tell you the benefits of a disciple. Because there are benefits. Glory to God. Biblical foundation, strong understanding, ability to apply biblical principles. With over 70% saying that they study their Bible regularly. The non disciple Christian, limited knowledge of scripture, surveys indicate that only about 25% read their Bible regularly. Now, let me explain to you. You see, I've heard some people say some things. Let me, recently, people said, 
there was something people were using. Aha! Remember that time that they were doing miracle and people were shouting? And people were saying that uh, miracles, they are, they, they are, they are, they are like film trick, that they are lies. Now, we're not validating people that are, they are creating error with those things. But what we're saying, a disciple will not go on Twitter and make mockery of sacred things. Because you know that the moment you start that, you're unconsciously telling yourself that everything you believe is a lie. And it's a matter of time. Somebody was asking me this. We said, if we were alive the day Mary said, is angel. You see, the essence of your Christian faith is like movie. Come. Let's come. Are you with me? Your Christian faith in which you are built upon is so true to be good. Number one, your savior was born of a virgin. Make it make sense. Your savior, your savior, turn water to wine. Make it make sense. Okay, so that's Bible day. Okay, let's calm down. I, I heard of a woman that gave birth without a womb. Make it make sense. Oh, that's fine. Wait. Okay, what about me that was formed together in seven months in my mother's womb? Make it make sense. So while there might be error, we don't throw away the truth. Because when the devil is coming with counterfeit, he wants us to actually not just throw away the counterfeit, but deny the truth of who we are. So some people came up with some funny things. Some, was, some people came up with the idea that you see, because I'm a prophet, that is why I speak the way I speak. I'm not a pastor. There was a group of people and I warned them. They said that somebody came up to say that they are in the order of Elijah. So they don't have accountability. They just came. They arrived. And I said to the person, I said you, and somebody else, a group, they, they told some people, they see one of the ways you learn is that in this place, the Holy Spirit will give you false prophecy to test whether you are humble. No, the Holy Spirit will give you a false word to, so you get it wrong to make you humble. I said, number one, a disciple knows that the Bible says the spirit of truth. It does not lie. So God needs to lie to humble you that that's a counterfeit. A disciple is, you see the benefit of discipleship so that you will not ask you, come. You go to a place, they are telling you, come out now, $5,000 for five graces. I, some people will feel it, but I will sit down there with Jesus' joy. Because I know that, you see, the grace of the Lord cannot be bought. I will not carry my school fees if the Lord has not led me to go and give so that I can be loved by God. The benefit of a disciple is that no wind of doctrine will throw you anywhere. You are inch. A benefit of a disciple is that your pastor, God forbid, not this one, not another one, no. maybe fornicate or fall. You do not pack. Jesus failed me. Is it the pastor that died for you? A disciple knows you follow a discipler as long as he's following Jesus. So for you to be discipled means you know Jesus to be able to tell that Jesus is this person. So the idea of a discipler was never to replace Jesus. A disciple knows that we don't worship leaders. We celebrate and honor them, but all glory goes to God. So when we're saying this thing, I say, listen, there is no way in the Bible that says the fruit of the Spirit is for only pastor. The fruit of the Spirit cuts across. Let's call bad behavior, bad behavior. If you don't know how to talk, don't tell me you're a prophet and apostle. That's why you talk that way. No, it is nowhere in scripture. And darling, you can't bring out Jeremiah for me because that's one of the many prophets in scripture. They are temperament. You don't use the Old Testament as a template. You will learn from it. The template for the giftings of the Lord and the oppression is Jesus. As seen in the New Testament. They say Jesus flogged people. Oh yeah, now how many times did he flog them? Because we take an exception and we try to make it the old truth. Glory to God. Evangelism. A discipled Christian actively share their faith. If you struggle to share your faith, you're not discipled. But no fear, you'll be discipled. If anything, eh, you see this month, you shall. Disciple, you shall be. <laughs> Study shows that 60% feel equipped to evangelize. All the undiscipled Christians likely, less likely to engage in evangelism. Roughly 25% share their faith. Some of you, you share about all the clothes you wear. Ah, have you seen my clothes? Cladini. Oh my God. Have you seen Cladini boo boo? I see, have you seen Ellen's dress? I want one dress one time. I'm like, oh my God, where do you? I said, ah, made in Nigeria. But when it comes to the gospel, your mouth is shut. You're not shy. You're just shy about the message. I'll take that again. You're not shy. You know why? You can talk about the clothes, talk about the news, talk about things, but when it comes to the gospel, all of a sudden, you begin to stutter. The question is, do you really believe what you said you believe? Do you really believe it? The woman at the well ran into the... I have met... Many of us are running, calling people, come to church. Do you know how many people don't go to church? Forget it though. People, you know how many people are not going to church? 
either by experiences or things that have happened to them. Glory to God. Are you following me? Look at another one. A disciple Christian has great reliance, resilience in facing life's challenges, with 70% reporting a sense of peace in difficult times. If you have been discipled, you know you can't pack your shop, pack your clothes and say, you know how many of you, I told you before, <laughs> oh my God, sorry. I thought I was already in that realm where we step out and we don't fall down, we, we float. <laughs> I don't know any realm like that, I don't know. Things happen, it can happen, but before someone says, oh my God, I want to be in that realm where I step out and I float. That's not a des desire God. If he choose for you to be flying, not as a wing to, but if he decides that you should be floating, he will help you, okay? Before he say, oh, that depth. No, let me, thank you, Holy Spirit. Stop allowing people that are using spiritual superiority and complex to pressure you. All of a sudden, people are copying tongues. I'm hearing people, there's a, there's a kind of tongue that, that, you know, that get to the realm, the dimension, the portal. Read your Bible. You say, I want to go the realm. You know, there are nuances. I'm not saying those things are wrong. Maybe that's the way they can express themselves. I will never forget something that Claire said. We must understand English. The use of words. All right? So you see people say, I've prayed 50 hours. That's great. And you all of a sudden, you're five. You say, oh my God, I'm forsaken. Hope you know. All your praying and fasting is not going to make God love you more. It's to make you attuned to what God has done and be sensitive to him. Does that mean you should not pray long? Listen, there are some things that take long. Don't forget it though. I'm not saying don't pray. Are, you need to, to desire such. I'm telling you. But don't come from the place of performance and you want to mark record. All right, because what is, I say, there's a realm. So I say, mm. That means there's a realm that you step out and your leg does not touch the ground. Chase Jesus. If he wants you to experience that, that's great. Some people saw Jesus in their room. Reverend Tokes tell you, you see Jesus. I never see him like that. I'm not less of a believer. Okay, I feel that was for somebody. Don't let people pressure you. Online is full of so many things. They, I don't know. For a lot of sites, I'm sorry, I miss you all. What's going on now? People put video. I saw a video. This is how I pray 24 hours in the Holy Ghost. And person going, shut And a camera? Are we joking? Listen, I'm married to my husband. I love I'm married people say amen. That thing you people do in the room or anywhere you do it. Right? Having sex with your partner is a world children are there. <laughs> having intimacy with your partner is great but the moment you introduce camera it becomes perverted there are intimacy you have with God that is great the moment you bring camera for the showcase of show the world it becomes perverted have a bit of discretion so, so that I can see how we pray we didn't even see how Jesus prayed we just know that he got up as it was his custom to go and pray and yet they were able to ask him, teach us how to pray. If you need to show off to let people pray, then you're not praying. Because the result of prayer is your lifestyle. The result of prayer is what you command. Stop it. Church, we'll come to it later. All this show thing that we're doing, showbiz, stop it. Back to my conversation. Praise God. So, a, disciple, a, 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 disciple, a disciple Christian is able to go through challenges. We're very resilient to what you go through. You don't pack up. Some people have said they will marry at the end of the year. I have a question for you. Is it God that gave you that vision? Or oh, was an ambition? Hey, Ginka. Ginka, you don't praise Ivy. <laughs> In your mother. Somebody says, My mother. And you're like, you know, And you're praying now. God, if you don't do it, I will just marry John Boo. Marry it. And you receive the benefit of such. Or you say, Father Lord, by this time, December. Hey, and December comes, you say, God has disappointed you. The question is, that vision, that dream, was it Yahweh's? Or projection that has come upon you that you by now, you look like you are marriageable. Why am I saying this? People are going through things and they are judging God unfaithful because they are not discipled. When you are disciples, you realize that your coming to Christ has nothing to do with what he can do for you. You must come to a point where if salvation, if all I have is Jesus, Jesus, Jesus is more than enough. You know, being transparent, guys. First of November happens to be 10 years of 
people, many people getting married. And I was really excited. Like, ah, oh, more, look at 10 years. Because ah, I'm already having my own plan of 10 years. Hey, you know, I've told people of, of some things that is going to happen. It's going to go down on our 10 years. I'm saying it again, Pew. You know? <laughs> so in case you are not aligning, we're we'll saying in front of the congregation. Right, right, right. So I was like, I already planning 10 years. Ah, ah, ah. Oh, oh, see me after. So, so when I see 1st of November, a lot of 10 years, I'm like, ah, oh, God of 10 years, 1st of November, people, you plan it. And a thought, I don't, I've never said this to you, it just came to my spirit. A thought rose up in my heart. All of them celebrating 10 years had kids standing by their side. And I saw it. I said, it just crossed my mind that we're going to take a picture. Oh, because I already have my dress and in my mind, and the Pio is going to buy a new ring. Doesn't know yet. <laughs> <laughs> so I saw children beside them. We all married 10 years. Because even if I get Belen now, I can't bomb before a break. <laughs> And I saw our picture of just both of us. And it crossed my heart. But God is my witness. It was a sad moment replaced with joy instantly. Because then I saw the nations that have been born through us. <laughs> then the next thing I saw was that, wait a minute, we're very good. We've loved ourselves so much for 10 years. The children go, when they come, or more. The love is going to shock them. <laughs> you see, this thing could make me think God is unfaithful. Could make me stop serving. Could bring shame. But my knowledge of who God is, as more than the God of babies, was my strength. So don't think I don't feel it. We, we do feel it, but it's not a conversation. Oh my God. As I said, it just came to my mind. That, ah, this happened. I've never said to people. Because I saw the beautiful picture. Small, small, fine children. All of them go like this. I want to carry flower for the church. I want to go and read people. Come on. Pastor Maury, Claire, all of you. All our spiritual children. Won't you wear flower clothes? Mm. We'll just wear flower clothes around. Say, hey, look at us. Perspective. <laughs> Isaiah 54. Single barren. It is a cry, oh barren. You that have not born children. Many are the children you were never born. That one were born. Look at me. I'm can one, can I one person born everybody here? But by the Spirit of God. So a disciple knows, no matter what I'm going through, Jesus is Lord. No matter what I'm going through, he's not scratching his head on heaven. How will I make him? He say, oh, baby, oh. He's not, he, no, no, no. Everything is on shadow. The last one year, I saw that all more, God is wise. Because the things that I, the Lord has done through I, in the last one year, ah, the Lord is wise. His timing is good. So a disciple will, will not say, Father, how can you do me do like this? You might have those moments. Like I said, remember, I was just tearing. I didn't plan to tear it. He do tear it because it's real. You might have those moments where you're like, ah, ah now let me walk out calm. Am I a singletude? Am I a Paul? Am I Paulina? Am I destined to marry at 60? I'm born at 65? You might feel the pressure of these things. People look like they're advancing. But a disciple, meaning the one that has been taught of the Lord and the word of God, knows you don't judge him faithful because he does good. He is good. That's why they are good things. But the one that is not discipled, meaning has not been taught of the Lord, has not sat down, will pack up shop. And many of you sitting out here, so many things have happened to you and you've disqualified yourself for being a follower of Christ or you think you don't have, you can't preach the message or whatever. I'm telling you the very reason why you qualify. A disciple Christian engaged in discipleship program. Research indicates that disciple participation leads to more robust faith. Those other ones are not in the discipleship program. Come for feed. Ah, what's feed? Because listen, ladies and gentlemen, as a church, from the, what's the day? What's the second? The second Tuesday, not this first Tuesday, the second Tuesday in, in, in November, we're starting our level two discipleship as a whole church. Glory to God, are you excited? Yeah. We're learning the cultures of the church as bedded in scripture, and it's going to run till December. And this we're doing at a particular time in the night, where your videos will be on. Yeah. yeah. All those cooking a band on Zoom. 
How we know that some of you are not really active results when your mic is off? Ah, Sally, what? You don't believe that African magic. And you are praying. And you are putting up at wow. You put wow in the chat. But when your mic open, ah, Imore, wow. Wow. How many surgeries did you surge on? A disciple knows that I'm serving my father. I serve with an attitude of, of, of a son. Praise God. So, what are the, let me give you more statistics from life we research. Study shows that only 37% of churchgoers say they've been discipled or mentored in the faith. Only 37. Barnard group indicate that only 10% of Christians feel that they're equipped to share their faith effectively. Statistics from discipleship programs shows that churches with formal discipleship processes have a high prevalence of super, spiritually mature members. For instance, churches with active disciple initiatives, those of you that have done your believers class and things. I'm going to tell you, as a pastor, it can be very discouraging. Because you can sit on one person. Discipleship takes time. It's not a program. So we're sorry for calling it a discipleship program. Program gives you like you graduate. You don't graduate. It's called pro discipleship process. But when I look at the lives of people in church, changing, transforming, I'm grateful to God. Glory to God. General trend, approximately 70% of Christians who feel connected to the discipleship program are likely to remain in their church long term. So there's a difference between the ones that is discipled and the one that is not. And the beginning of being discipled is accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Let's read the scripture for today and then we'll pray. I'll continue next week. Have you been blessed? Yes. I want you to know that for us as a church, we are not in a hurry to just give you a title or look good. We are on a mission. Somebody say we're on a mission. We're on a mission. I was so blessed watching church online. How many of you were blessed by the ministry of Pastor Emmanuel? Pastor Miriam? Pastor Momo? And all the leaders, look at the choir, look at everybody. You know what I tell myself? I am not in, I'm not indispensable. Nobody is. If I mess up today, I say I don't do it again. God will replace me. I will not replace me to manage this one. You know, my child, my favorite child is gone. He will bring the best. That's the consciousness we must have. Now, can I say this? The principle for discipleship in scripture is you follow Jesus and you follow a leader. Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. The question I have for you, who are you following? Who are you following? Glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Matthew 4, 19, 20. Matthew 4. When I saw the scripture this year, I've read it over and over. Oh my God. I jumped out because I found a, a, another way to look at the vision of God for my life. <laughs> Walking along the beach, I'm using message translation first, 18 to 20. Walking along the beach of Lake Galilee, Jesus saw two brothers, Simeon, later called Peter and Andrew. They were fishing, throwing their nets into the lake. It was their regular walk. Jesus said to them, come with me and I'll make you a new kind, I'll make a new kind of fisherman out of you. I will show you how to catch men and women instead of perch and bears. They didn't ask questions, but they simply dropped their nets and said the next verse together. Let's do that last verse together. One to go. 20. One to go. One of the hallmarks of a disciple, especially with God, no question asked. You said it, we do it. We say it, we do it. Let's just go to TPT. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Matthew 4, from verse 19. Jesus called out to them, Come and follow me. And let's read it together. I want to go and I will transform you. When I saw it, I screamed. It is a follow me and I'll make you a fan. No, follow me and fan will come out of you. No, I will make you. It is a follow me and I will use you. He said, follow me and I will make you. This is the missing gap for a lot of people. The making of a disciple. The making of a believer. It is a process. It is, can be excruciating. It is a process. The making. He said, follow me and I will make you. I will transform you. 
Meaning I will change your life. The rest of the day today, I'm going to use, just look at the life of Peter as an example for you. Follow me. I don't care where you are. Follow me and I will make you. I look at my life and I said, Jesus, it's following Jesus that changed my life. There's nothing I have, I own, I know. I was on a panel yesterday and I went with um, some of our great people. In fact, we shout out to Hope Nation. You guys turn up, right? And support our, our dear um, Pastor Kika. You know, so I was there and I, I was, was speaking. Now, there was a question that was supposed to ask. They asked the question. I went, oh my God. Oh my, they were just thanking God. And I sat and I said to them, this is not me. I opened my mouth and he filled it. Why? I'm following him and it's transforming me into a person that will catch people for God. Meaning anywhere I'm at, the moment I open my mouth, is going to fill it as long as you're following. I have a question for you today. Are you following Jesus? Now let's break down this verse. Number one, from this verse, the call to discipleship, we see in verse nine, follow me. This invitation doesn't mean just follow him physically, but it means come into a deeper relationship with Jesus. My God, you cannot have been a Christian for five years, ten years, one month, three months, and you remain the same, sir. You can't keep speaking the same way. You can't keep doing this. You can't have the same appetite. Then you are not following Jesus. The Jesus I know, he comes into your life. He's going to disrupt it for good. He's going to change the way you think. He's going to change the way you walk. He's going to change. He's going to change you. Something happened to me, I think maybe a week or two weeks now. And someone was saying to me yesterday, ah, P.I., I'm sure there's people around you that calmed you down. You that I know. That's a testimony. I'm, I fight injustice. Champion injustice. Any injustice, I don't, I don't take it. You know, but when you follow Jesus, shit you will take. Permit my French. Rubbish you will embrace sometimes. Quiet you will quiet sometimes. Have you seen when you have typed, God said, delete it. And all of a sudden you look like a puppy. But you are a lion. But the lion is also the lamb. Follow me, says Jesus. If you tell me you are following Jesus, I can trace it. You see, following Jesus is a very, very traceable. It's like it's one plus one equals two. We can tell the outcome of a person that follows Jesus. Is somebody with me? If you follow Jesus, aya, we can tell the outcome. We will tell that you ate iniquity. We will tell that you ate some kind of things after a while. You might struggle, but you will not stay down. If you follow Jesus, you might fall, but enemy do not rejoice over me because I'm unkillable, because a righteous man might fall, but seven times he will rise again. Follow me. You will never be discouraged permanently. Discouraging things might happen, but the joy of the Lord is on your inside. The fruit of the Spirit, joy comes out of you. Follow me and I will make you. Follow me and I will make you. I change the way you think. You can't be with Jesus. The Bible says in the book of Hebrews chapter 4, the word of God is sharper than two-edged sword, piercing to the marrow. It goes for your thoughts. It goes for your intents. Follow me. Somebody say, follow me. Follow me. I can't hear you. Follow me. So when Jesus made that call to Peter, Peter did not have a clue that it's going to be a martyr. Follow me. Follow me. Somebody say, follow me. Oh, I feel, follow me. Follow Jesus. You will not do business with a little bit of shadiness. Follow me. You might have started out that way. After a while, I've, you know, there's something my friends and I said, I said, my consecration cannot accommodate that. There's some things, ah, there was a movie that was played, I said, hey, I are the body of my body is the temple of the almighty meaning these eyes belongs to Jesus what is Jesus watching am I comfortable for Jesus I'm seated and Jesus is seated in me and I'm watching a kind of thing you are struggling with pornography yes I know you're struggling be sure you're struggling you're not enjoying it and you can cry out Jesus son of David have mercy on me pastor let me share the story he was masturbating he was doing it like um, morning afternoon evening and things it's not like that Sorry. <laughs> Apologies, sir. He said, well, you know, it's a struggle. It was there. It was a daily communion. You see? <laughs> Apologies. One time, some, okay, not daily. Once in a while, thing, right? It was steady. It was daily. Kudos, Bishop. I celebrate you. So, Bill said it was daily. This time. That food. But he came in contact with Jesus. He was going to church. Nothing changed. He became a disciple and everything changed. You can 
be going to church in and out. But when you engage what church really offers, which is discipleship, not program, not attendance, not chair woman, not welcome, welcome to church. I sing. When you engage, not the gift, but the fruit. When you engage, hey, when you. Sin, they do me. Why? I'm a living testimony. When you engage, the Bible says, you don't pray. Come on, masturbation. I stop you. I stop you. Stop masturbation. Masturbation, laugh. <laughs> Why? Because it's the word. It's the word that changes things. Some of you are giving up on yourself. All you need to do is be it long enough. You are giving up because you have another option. When you know you don't have another option, we die here. When you know you don't have another option, we die here. When you know you don't have another option, looking on to Jesus, the author and the finisher, there is no in between. There is nobody else. I'm building it. I don't like what I'm doing. I don't like who I am, but I'm building it. If I can look at it long enough, there is nobody in scripture that stayed long enough, that kept looking, that remained the same. Anything you're exhibiting that you don't like, you're not looking long enough. Follow me. And he said, the Lord said to him, Read the Bible. How many times? Give me that someone like again. Five times Monday to Friday. Five chapters. Mm. Mm. Three chapters Monday to Friday. And five Saturday and Sunday. The Lord said to Pio, take your mind off what you're trying to stop and focus on what you're going to start. That's somebody's word. Stopping is not why Jesus came. Starting is why he came. Because when you start some things, my God, it becomes impossible for things to remain. It will die natural death. Why? You can stop seeing or feed seeing. And he started reading the scripture. And you know, um, the hunger in this kingdom, when you feed, you get hungry. Hunger is the frequency in which you grow. You begin to long for God and desire him. And the only way you can do that is beyond it in scripture. You are reading the scripture and one day you look at it. You are the light of the world. You are the salt of the earth. You that you are born in Mushi and have no future and no ambition. But you are looking at the scripture and you are seeing what God can make out of a man. If I follow him long enough, I will not just become the light, I will become the preferred. I am the light of the world, the salt of the earth. Meaning I have solution inside of me. Meaning I am the one that God has called to do mighty things in my world. Meaning it's me the Lord has put this thing inside. It doesn't matter my background. Let it be back to the ground. If I follow Jesus, something is coming out of me. Why? We carry this treasure in every vessel that the excellency of God might be made known. I might not look like it. I might not feel like it. I just need to follow and build him long enough. And all of a sudden, he went from daily meal to weekly meal. From weekly meal to monthly meal. And after a while, it has dropped Let me show you something. Some of this thing is around you this way. The more you build and you're using the hand, let's imagine you're using your hand to press. After a while, it falls off. You don't even know at what point it fell. Why? I'm building him. I mean, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Have you seen all those? Thank you so much. Okay. Have you seen all those movies where they're going into the light, they're going into the fire? Things are falling off. It took, I dare you, masturbation, follow me into intimacy. I dare you, follow, follow me. Follow me. I tell you something. Break out of the fair. The problem is you, you do not want to be free. If you want to be free, the only way is the word. Baba, we died here. Follow me to be too messy. I can see my sister there. Um, T.I., she committed five abortions. She had all the terrible past. The devil tried to cheat her. She has two children. Beautiful marriage. I said, you don't need to be like your past. There is no repercussion for any child of God that comes into Christ than Christ himself. If you come into Christ, the only outcome for you is Christ. It doesn't matter where you have been. It doesn't matter what you have done. Do you want him? If you want him, you will sell everything else to get him. You will give up everything else to get him. And I said, follow me into intimacy. Fear, follow me into intimacy. What is intimacy? I'm pressed on all sides by worshiping. I will exalt you. 
You are my God. Tears is coming down. Discouragement, you're pushing me. No problem. What you're trying to do is to make me to stop worshiping. But I know he is the way, the truth, and the life. I will not stop following. The more I keep following, I become, all of a sudden, it becomes impossible to be where I am. Why? Nothing unholy can behold and stand in the holiness of God. Pastor Emmanuel, I just need to go deep enough. I remember a man of blessed memory. He said there was a guy that was struggling with cigarettes. And the guy came to me, Pastor, I want to stop. He said, you want to stop? <laughs> the next time, you feel like smoking. And you start. I'm the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I'm above and not believe. He said, ah, ah, Pastor. He said, I say, the issue is that this something has to give. He kept doing it. It was a matter of time that fell of him. Am I saying go and say, I'll say we can be smoking. I'll just be quoting scripture. That's carnality because you are not struggling. You are trying to use it to justify your sin. But for someone that is desperate, you will shout, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And they say, follow me. Somebody say, follow me. Somebody say, follow me. He will take that one from a broken home, battered home, me and P.O., everything combined together, dysfunction, pro max. Pro max. And give us a marriage that is blessing the world. Heaven on earth. We just told it now. Ten years. He's not told when he came to meet me yesterday. He said, ah, I'm just three years. And I'll be, oh. I'm like, you are ten years. <laughs> are you okay? <laughs> me, I'm just three. I said, don't worry. You don't have to wait till ten. Don't worry. The Lord will do it for you. Do you know how many babies we have named here? If I'm not following Jesus, I will have judged God unfaithful. He's doing things. So God is not bad to me. He's not unjust to us. We will keep following. In following, I've met people. Hmm. Please. I say follow Jesus. In following, you will meet people. In following, you will become. In following, what is purpose? Who are you to even have purpose? But it's in following Jesus you find purpose. All of a sudden, the things you used to do, I'm telling you, listen to me. No money can give you the fulfillment of knowing you're in the center of God's will. I don't know how to explain it to you. It's just annoying to know that God is pleased with me. Not just because I'm obeying law, but I'm just doing what God wants me to do. Somebody say, follow! follow. Now there we will stop today. Follow me! I will make you. Many of us don't want to be made. You know what it is to be made? The butter. They will carry you like this. They will slam you on the floor. They will strip all your entitlements. I don't, they don't talk to me that way. You don't send me that place. I don't do that. I don't do that. You know, I use my money out. You lose the right to make decisions yourself. You lose the right to, it's not, no matter what, it's not my feelings. It's not my thoughts. It's, what do you want, sir? Follow me. It will cost you. Hey, follow me. Is it following Jesus? I know that they stop pressing me in the sleep. Eh? Hey. Those of you that you are sleeping and you can't sleep, they choke you. You say, I want to say Jesus. They say, G, 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 <laughs> Are there people like that, dear? No fear, you dear. Let me testify. Follow Jesus. I dare the devil. As you grow in the knowledge of Christ Jesus, follow Jesus. Follow Jesus. It was one day, is in following. God knows that this one, uh, John is for Hello. If you ever touch this guy again, guy, yeah, no, no try it again. Follow Jesus. Your ordinary you. How many of you? Ordinary business you are doing. Now they are looking for you everywhere in the world. Who you be before? before? Is it not Jesus? Jesus looks good on us. Yeah. Jesus makes the difference all of a sudden. He said, You are more than conqueror. The one we fight that conquered, carry the spoils of war and put it on you and beautify you. You are more than conqueror. It is no longer you that live, but Christ that liveth in you. The life you live, you live by faith through the Son of God. Follow me, and I will make you. Somebody say, God, make me. But it comes with a crushing. Next week, I will show you what it means to be a follower. To follow Jesus, you are a son. You are a servant. You are studious. You are accountable. You are learning. Posture of learning. A lady said something yesterday. He says that, you are made at the feet of Jesus. Seated at his feet. Somebody say follow. And you know the rest of the story? As our P.O. was set free from masturbation. It's a thing of the past. It's not about what you want to stop. It's first about what you want to start. Create a new routine. How do you follow Jesus? Because I'm saying follow, follow. Yes, I follow, I follow. How do you follow? You read the Bible. You pray. 
be planted in a local church. Don't, when I say plant, I just say, say attend. Don't just enter and run out. I, they ask me, they ask, it's okay. All of us are okay. All of our we'll team will be, you know, will be okay. He said, you know, my trauma, who will give you trauma? You collect it as bad. Oh, the trauma. Follow Jesus, he will heal you of that trauma. Ha. I've seen people forgive the worst set of people before. Follow. I've seen go, there's somebody. Hey God, which story now? I, I'll say it again. No, I see this God is very fantastic God. I told you about my friend Tia. One day we ministered. I said, look at it. I kept myself. I was a virgin. I married as a virgin. My dear friend has gone through a lot. Like I said, she had four abortions or thereabouts. In fact, the brother, ah, they do a strong thing. Her story is on YouTube and then she got born again. She fell in church again. Slept with a married man. Some of you have left the church. The Lord told her, remain in the church. The making of a disciple is not, is not bread and butter. I know this gospel of, my God, come, yes, come as you are. But it's a disservice to stay as you are. Years later, I'm waiting. She has children. But you know why I'm able to say, because I'm a follower of Jesus. I know that God is fair. Now look at my, my, my friend. He's an amazing worshiper. When she opens, people say, hey, thank you, Holy Spirit. I heard the Lord say, for somebody say, what good can come out of Nazareth? What good can come out of you without past, without brokenness? I dare you follow Jesus. The one that will not usher, see, I will hold Mike like this. I worship you, Ugwa, presence. Does that past qualify? No. What qualifies that? Jesus. I said the gospel and Jesus is a leveler. Is a leveler. Whether you have been born again 55 years or you were born again one year, I'm telling you, follow. Can you rise on your feet? I will take our wrap up service. There's any announcement, give it to me. I'm gonna give you two minutes. Do we have the communion? Is that the com- do you have the communion today? If you're here, the first way to follow Jesus is to give your life to Christ. If you're not born again or you want to rededicate your life, can you raise your hand? No movement in the house, please. Just hold on. This is very important. If you're not born again or you want to rededicate your life to Jesus, meaning I've been born again, but I, I slipped aside, but now... Just hold on, please. Hold on with the sharing. Hold on with the sharing. Please give it. And you want to rededicate your life to Christ. Can you raise your hand? Anybody? Or if you're online, is anybody raising their hands? Okay. Now, so that is why you can take this. I want to appeal to you, bring your friends to church. Your friends are not going to church, your friends are not born again, bring them to church. So now we're going to take the communion. Can you share it? Pray in the Holy Ghost if you are following Jesus. Thank God, thank God, thank God, thank God, thank God. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on, open your mouth and say, thank you, Jesus! Are there followers of Jesus in this place? Are there followers of Jesus in this place? The making of a disciple, we just started. Next, we're going to look at what it is like to really be a disciple. How do you become a disciple? Upper, we're going to look at the gospel. What is the message of a disciple? Oh, thank you, Jesus. I wish I can tell you that's everything God has told me to do that I love. No. I have cried doing some things. I've forgiven people I, I thought there was no need. I've gone to places I felt, Lord, don't send me. I've left things that I love. I've left jobs that I loved. But I can tell you the reward for following God outweighs that. I've been misunderstood by some. I was persecuted by some. I was chastised by family at some point. But listen, there's nothing compared to following and I'll tell you, some of you are following half measure. You can't get the best of it. You have to come in full. As you take this communion, you're making a commitment. Father, make me. That's my prayer for you. Father, make me. Open your mouth and begin to pray. I want to hear the prayer in the house. Cry to God and say, Father, make me. Just pray that before we take the communion. Come on, talk to God. 
There is no freedom. The kingdom is here. You keep praying. I, I lay down my old flames. Somebody cry to God. I'm giving you one more minute. Minute. Say, Lord, make me. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Say, God, make me. Say, God, make me. Say, God, make me. God, Lord, I'm tired of my terms. Say, Lord, please make me. Make me. Where there is new wine, there is new power, there is new freedom, the kingdom is here. I lay down my old place to carry your new high today. So you can open the communion and take the bread and the wine while we sing in the crushing. In the crushing, in the pressing, you are making new wine. In the soil, I now surrender. You are breaking new ground. Keep praying, keep talking to God. So I yield to you into your careful end. When I trust you, I don't need to understand. Everybody, make me, come on. Make me a vessel. Make you can put the lyrics if you have it. Make me whatever you want me to be. Lord, I came here with nothing. But all you have given me. Jesus, bring me life. Everybody from the devil, where there's new one. Where there is new one. shut your eyes I want to speak to you your heart just make a commitment to God and say father make me just say father make me I let go of my past I hear for somebody forgive yourself I say father make me it's not too late says the Lord I say father make me some of you that you're being made say father I'm not being a hurry I'm not jumping out of this process some of you also say to the Lord Lord, I give myself 100%. I give 100%. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name of prayer. Come on, jam your hands together for Jesus. You may be seated.